Welcome to another Pentair learning presentation, Water In and Water Out. This slide addresses pumps that pump water in from a water source. Take this booster pump for example. A booster pump boosts existing water pressure. Shown over here on the left side of the house is a jet pump. Also, note the submersible well pump and the tanks located just over here in the lower right portion of this home's illustration. And finally, here is a sprinkler pump that is specific to sprinkler applications. This slide addresses pumps that pump water out of the home. These are typically pumps that can handle sump, sewage, and effluent water. You can see here in the basement of this illustration, there's a sump pump. Also shown are utility pumps that are good for water removal or water transfer. They're quite versatile in the way they can be multifunctional. Effluent pumps are designed to move gray water from an effluent basin into a sewer or septic line. They typically handle water from sinks, showers, or laundry facilities that may contain up to three quarter of inch solids. Lastly, a sewage pump is designed to move black water, which is raw sewage, up and into a septic line. These pumps can handle solids up to 2 inches in diameter. Sprinkler pumps typically provide water to your in-ground sprinkler system from well water, household water, or an open water source. Sprinkler pumps move water from a water source to a system that moves water to various locations, such as a sprinkler system. Sprinkler pumps should be used with a water source that has a depth to water of 25 feet or less. Key considerations? The construction, typically cast iron or thermoplastic, gallons per minute, how much water the pump will move, and horsepower, which is the horsepower of the pump, and performance. Optimal performance for an in-ground sprinkler system is achieved at 30 PSI. When choosing a sprinkler pump, you want to consider five parameters. One, what is the water source? Two, what is your suction lift? 3. What is your water demand? 4. What is the horsepower of the pump required? And 5. What pipe size should you use? When it comes to a water source, you're going to get it from either well water, household water, or an open water source such as a lake or pond. When determining your suction lift, you must measure the vertical distance of the pump above the water source. Remember that maximum vertical lift is at 25 feet. Then what is your water demand? What are the number of sprinkler heads you'll have in your system? What are the gallons per minute required by each sprinkler head? To calculate this, you'll multiply the number of heads by gallons per minute for each head to determine the total demand. Remember that optimum performance is achieved at 30 PSI. Then you'll determine the needed horsepower for your pump. To do this, you'll consider the depth to water source and the capacity required, which is the gallons per minute at 30 PSI. Finally, what pipe size should you use? The suction pipe should be the same size or larger than the discharge pipe size of the pump. Things you'll need will be a check valve or a foot valve, PVC cement, PTFE pipe thread sealant. You'll also want to be sure that you have these tools available. A screwdriver, adjustable pliers, a tape measure, and a hacksaw. The next couple slides talk about well products. These are going to be jet pumps and 4-inch submersible well pumps. These bring clean, usable water into your home from a well water source. Pressure tanks are used to store water until you need to use it. Jet pumps are mainly used for household water supply from a well, drive point system, or open water source. Jet pumps are used in conjunction with a precharged pressure tank. Key considerations for jet pumps are the depth to water, power supply, and horsepower. For deep well applications, the depth to water is typically greater than 25 feet. In shallow well application, depth to water should be 25 feet or less. When it comes to power supply, most jet pumps are dual voltage and can be run with either 115 volt or 230 volt power supply. When replacing a deep well pump, you must match the horsepower of the current pump to maintain optimal performance. When it comes to shallow wells, you must match or increase the horsepower of your current pump to maintain or improve performance. When choosing your jet pump, you want to consider a couple of things. Number one, what is your depth to water? If it's 25 feet or less, you want to choose a shallow well or convertible jet pump. One pipe between the water source and the pump indicates a shallow well application. A convertible jet pump is a deep well pump that can be converted to operate as a shallow well pump, as long as it's with the use of an ejector kit. But if you're pumping 25 feet or more, you'll choose a deep well or convertible jet pump. 
two pipes indicate a deep well application. A deep well or convertible jet pump requires an ejector kit for proper operation. Remember, you'll also need to consider the construction. Do you want cast iron or thermoplastic? And also, what is the voltage of the power supply? Very important, you must match the power supply with the voltage of the pump. Just a couple more considerations. Is an ejector kit required? This is also known as a jet package, which is required for proper operation of a convertible jet pump. Without a jet, the pump would only move water. It would not build enough pressure to turn off. Do you need a pressure switch? Jet pumps turn on and off by a device called the pressure switch. This is typically included with the pump. The pressure range indicates at what pressures the pump will turn on and off. Also, you'll install or replace the foot valve and or check valve in a shallow well installation. The first animation in this section shows operation of a shallow well jet pump. The second animation shows operation of a deep well jet pump. This animation shows how a shallow well jet pump works. Remember, a shallow well setup is applicable when the depth to water is 25 feet or less. The first thing that happens is the pressure gauge measuring water pressure entering the home from the water storage tank drops from its usual 50 psi down to 30 psi. This drop in pressure triggers the pressure switch inside the pump's motor that tells the pump that more water is needed to meet pressure. And so begins a pump cycle. In doing so, water flows up through the well case or well point, past the foot valve and strainer, up the pipe, pushed into the tank, and fed into the house. The bladder inside the tank is filled again to pressure, and the household has the water it needs. This animation shows how a deep well jet pump works in a residential application. Remember, a deep well setup is applicable when the depth of water is 25 feet or more. The first thing that happens is the pressure gauge measuring water pressure from the home to the storage tank drops from its usual 50 psi down to 30 psi. This drop in pressure triggers the pressure switch inside the pump's motor that additional water is needed, and so the pump cycle begins. Water is pushed to the deep well down one pipe and then pulled back up from the ground and into another well pipe. When water reaches the pump and the tank, it is both fed to the house and refills the tank bladder so that the tank can regain desired pressure. In addition, there are two types of well pumps, a single pipe and a double pipe. A double pipe deep well will require a 4-inch well casing and a well seal. A single pipe deep well can be managed in either a 2-inch or a 3-inch well casing and leather cup seals. For a typical jet pump installation, you'll want to have the following materials. Check valve, PVC cement, tank cross, discharge T, well seal, PTFE pipe thread sealant, as well as these tools, a screwdriver, an adjustable wrench, a hacksaw, and a pipe wrench. A 4-inch submersible well pump is mainly used for household water supply. It is also used in conjunction with pre-charged pressure tanks. Key considerations for a 4-inch submersible pump are size of well casing, depth to water, and horsepower. You must have a minimum diameter of a 4-inch well casing for the pump, with a depth to water of 400 feet or less. With regard to the horsepower, you want to replace the existing pump with the same horsepower and pump gallon series. When choosing your 4-inch submersible pump, you want to consider existing wiring as well as horsepower. In a two-wire, the pump includes the start controls in the motor. If the wiring goes from the pressure switch directly to the pump, it's a two-wire. These pumps have three wires, actually. One is the ground wire. Then there are three-wire 4-inch submersible pumps. These include the control box, which is mounted above ground. These three-wire pumps have a control box between the pressure switch and the pump. These pumps will have four wires, where one is a ground wire. Horsepower. Replace an existing pump with the same horsepower and gallon series. The greater the depth of water, the higher the horsepower required. This animation shows how a 4-inch submersible well pump works in a residential application. In this scenario, the pressure gauge measuring water pressure between the submersible well and the tank T drops from its usual 60 psi down to 40 psi. Because this home's water system is using a control box, the pressure switch triggered by the low pressure kicks off a signal to the box that pressure has fallen and more water is required. The control box then sends a signal down to the well to engage the pump. Now the pump can push water up to the residence, where it is fed to the tank and to the house. The tank's bladder refills, regaining pressure, and simultaneously, the house has its water needs met. When installing a typical 4-inch submersible well pump, you want to make sure you have certain materials and tools handy. 
Materials you might need will be rigid PVC or steel pipe, hose clamps, pipe fittings, a relief valve, a well cap, a tank T, check valves, pressure switch, pressure gauge, surge protector, well seal or pitless adapter, and an installation splice kit. Tools you'll want to have handy are a screwdriver, pliers, hammer, electric cable, ohm meter, small weight, string, electrical tape, hacksaw, quarter inch nylon safety rope, knife or rounded file, block and tackle, two pipe wrenches, a heat gun, wire cutter or stripper, and an adjustable wrench. Pressure tanks. Pressure tanks store water under pressure from a well system. Increased water storage capacity extends the life of your pump by reducing the number of times the pump must cycle to supply water to your home. Key considerations for pressure tanks, they can be vertical or they can be horizontal, construction, and then there's pre-charged versus standard tanks. As for the orientation, vertical tanks are ideal for applications with a smaller footprint. Horizontal tanks are ideal for applications with height restrictions. When it comes to construction, our tanks are made of heavy gauge steel and have a tough appliance-like finish that extends the life of the tank. Standard tanks are not pre-pressurized. As the pump pushes water into the tank, it compresses the existing air pocket, thereby pressurizing the tank. The air volume control helps to maintain the air pocket in the tank once pressurized. Standard tanks are known as air over water. The air presses down on the water, causing it to stay pressurized. Pre-charged tanks contain a bladder. The bladder, or diaphragm, stops the water from absorbing the air out of the tank, keeping it pressurized. When choosing a pressure tank, you have two main considerations. First of all, if you have an existing pressure tank, is it pre-charged and what's its size? All pre-charged tanks will have a single pipe connection. For extreme conditions, consider a galvanized standard tank. As far as size, the tank needs to hold the amount of water the pump is capable of pumping in one minute. A bigger tank is always better. The bigger the tank, the fewer times the pump cycles, thereby extending the life of the pump. When installing a tank, you're going to need to have some things handy. Materials you may need are pressure switch, pressure gauge, pressure relief valve, tank T, fittings, check valve, tank installation kit, air volume control kit, PVC glue, and PTFE pipe thread sealant. Tools you might need are going to be a screwdriver, adjustable pliers, hacksaw, and tape measure. Every day, water flows into and out of our homes in several different ways. Fresh water for our kitchens, bathrooms, and sprinklers comes in through city water lines or from a private water well. Many homes also have drainage water, or what we call clear water from rain or melting snow that collects in the basement or crawl space. In a basement like this, a basin or sump pit works automatically to remove clear water. Without removing it, your basement could flood, causing thousands of dollars worth of damage. Every home also has two types of wastewater. Wastewater containing soap from the kitchen, laundry, and bathrooms, also called gray water or effluent water, flows out of the home through the sewer or septic line. Sometimes an effluent basin is used to collect this gray water. Inside this basin is an effluent pump that lifts the water up and into the sewer or septic line. Sewage water, also called black water containing urine, toilet paper, and fecal matter from toilets, also flows out of the home through the sewer or septic line. A sewage basin or ejector pit like this is typically used in homes with basement toilets. A sewage pump lifts this material up and, come on over here a minute, and out into the sewer line. For those of you unfamiliar with the septic system, this is used when municipal sewer service is not available. It's a container outside the home that collects wastewater. Generally, it's buried underground, has two compartments, and is watertight. The larger compartment is for black water, and the second compartment is for gray water. Congratulations. Hopefully, you now know more about sump, effluent, and sewage pumps than you did 30 minutes ago. To review, sump, 
effluent and sewage pumps work together to create a system that removes wastewater from your home by sending it to either a septic system or local sewer line. Some pumps are used to remove clear water or drainage water. Effluent pumps move gray water from baths, sinks, and laundry with solids up to three quarters of an inch. Sewage pumps remove black water with raw sewage and solids up to two inches in diameter. Replacing a sump pump typically takes about 30 minutes and can be done with common household tools. Sump pumps are your best defense against flooding. Automatic sump pumps remove drainage water that collects in the sump basin located in your basement or crawl space. Key considerations for sump pumps, they are either submersible or non-submersible, meaning the motor can or cannot be submerged underwater. GPH means gallons per hour, how much water the pump will move per hour. Horsepower, that's the horsepower of the pump. Construction material, that can be thermoplastic, cast iron, stainless steel, or aluminum. Switch type, the switch turns the pump on and off. Typical switch types are tethered, vertical, or electronic. Your house is your largest investment which needs to be protected from flooding. When adverse weather saturates the ground around the foundation of your house, flooding can occur. As water moves through the ground, a drain tile around the foundation of your house directs rainwater into your sump pit. As water rises in your pit, our pump automatically activates, emptying the pit and protecting your basement from flooding. When choosing to replace a sump pump, you have three main considerations. Do you have a pedestal or submersible style sump pump? What is the horsepower of your current sump pump? What is the gallons per hour of your current sump pump? Pedestal pumps are non-submersible. The motor stands out of the water and can usually be seen above the basin lid. Submersible style pumps are designed to be completely submerged in water. Advantages to the submersible style are that they're quieter, more efficient, longer lasting, completely hidden in the basin, and easier to install. Horsepower. Choose a pump equal to or greater than the horsepower of your current pump. Look at the identification plate to determine the horsepower. If the existing horsepower is not known, then choose a half horsepower pump. This is the most common size needed. Gallons per hour. Choose a pump with equivalent gallons per hour to your current pump. More active pits require a higher pumping capacity. Additional considerations are diameter of the discharge pipe, the diameter of your sump basin, and check valves. As far as the diameter, typical discharge pipe sizes are one and a quarter or one and a half inch. Match the discharge size of your pump to the pipe size or purchase an adapter to attach the discharge of your new pump to your pipes. As far as the diameter of your sump basin, there are three switches to consider. Tethered switches angle up as the water enters the sump basin and typically require a sump diameter of 14 inches. Vertical switches move up and down as water enters the sump basin and they typically require a minimum sump diameter of 10 inches. Electronic switches typically require a sump diameter of also 10 inches. If that diameter is unknown, choose a vertical or electronic switch. A check valve should also be replaced whenever a sump pump is replaced. For added peace of mind, add a battery backup unit. The battery powered pump will operate during a power outage. For a typical sump pump installation, you'll need the following materials. One and a half or one and a quarter PVC or ABS pipe, PVC or ABS glue or primer, one and a half or one and a quarter PVC male threaded adapter, check valve. Always replace the check valve with a new pump installation. If you're installing a battery backup, you'll need a 12 volt deep cycle battery. Tools you'll want to have handy are screwdriver, adjustable wrench, hacksaw, pipe wrench, drill with an eighth of an inch bit, round file or sandpaper. Submersible utility pumps can be completely submerged to remove unwanted water. Transfer utility pumps are non-submersible and transfer water from one location to another. Utility pumps are used for a variety of applications. They move water quickly and efficiently from one place to another. They're ideal for removing water from window wells, rooftops, and flooded areas for draining sinks, aquariums, baby pools, boats, and more. 
Key considerations for utility pumps are their application, their performance, and their construction. In a transfer application, it moves water from one location to another without submerging the pump. In a submersible application, it removes water from a flooded area with a submersible pump. Performance. Horsepower performance simply means that the higher horsepower of the motor, the more volume of water can be moved faster. Gallons per hour, you want to choose a pump with a gallons per hour that's appropriate for the volume of water you need to move. Construction can be thermoplastic, cast aluminum, cast iron. Thermoplastic is lightweight and corrosion resistant. Cast aluminum is very durable. And cast iron is also very durable. When choosing a utility pump, you want to consider what your application is going to be. Will it be to remove standing water, transfer water, improve water pressure, and how much water do you have to move? For removing standing water, you'll want to choose a submersible pump. These are ideal for larger, deeper pumping projects as they are designed to be completely immersed in water. You might use them to remove water from flooded areas or remove standing water from window wells, rooftops, or basements. When transferring water from one location to another, you'll want to choose a non-submersible pump. These are ideal for smaller household projects, such as draining clogged sinks, or boats, or washing machines, or just transferring water to and from troughs, portable pools, aquariums, water beds, and so on. Utility pumps can also improve water pressure, in which case you would choose a pressure-boosting pump. These are ideal for increasing water pressure for tough jobs, such as washing cars and boats, irrigating and watering the lawn. How much water do you have to move and how quickly do you need to move it? These are what you need to consider, and choose a pump with the proper horsepower and gallons per hour capacity that meets the needs of the job. Materials you might need in a typical pump application will be a 5 8 or 3 quarter garden hose at the appropriate length that your application requires, a universal discharge hose kit, an extension cord, and a garden hose adapter. Sewage pumps are typically installed in basements and move waste with up to 2 inch solids up and into the main sewer line. Now let's move on to sewage pumps. A sewage pump is designed to move black water, or raw sewage, up and into a sewer or septic line. These pumps are specifically designed to handle solids up to two inches in diameter. Some common features of all sewage pumps include, they are designed to pump black water. Usually they use high starting torque motors equipped for high volume or gallons per minute with lower head or pressure. They can handle up to two inch solids. They are used to send waste into a septic system, sewer line, sewage treatment plant, or sewage pit. Sewage pumps are most commonly used in the following applications. For homes that have septic systems, for homes that have basement bathrooms, for homes that have a municipal sewage line that is above the level of the house. Sewage pumps are a necessity for homes with basement toilets and are used to lift flushable waste from the sewage basin up and into the main sewer line. Sewage pumps are designed to handle solids up to 2 inches in diameter. Key considerations are gallons per hour, which is how much the fluid will pump or move per hour, horsepower of the pump, construction, which could be thermoplastic, cast iron, or stainless steel, and switch type, which turns the pump on and off. A tethered switch is ideal for a sewage application. When choosing a sewage pump, you need to know the horsepower and the gallons per hour flow of the pump you're replacing. For horsepower, choose a pump equal to or greater than the horsepower of the current pump. If you don't know the existing horsepower, consider the number of drains flowing into the sewage pit. One to three drains, you should choose a half horsepower pump. Four or more drains, choose a three-quarter horse. The farther the distance the waste must be lifted, the more powerful the pump needs to be. What is the gallons per hour flow of your current pump? You need to choose a pump that's equivalent to the gallons per hour of your current pump. More active sewage systems require a higher capacity pump. Additional considerations are the discharge pipe, switch type, and check valve. For discharge, sewage lines are 2 inch or larger in diameter and made of either PVC, ABS, galvanized steel, or copper pipe. Check your local code. Match the discharge size of the pump to your pipe size or 
purchase an adapter to attach to the discharge of your new pump to your pipes. Switch type, tethered switches are ideal for sewage applications because they're less likely to get hung up. Check valves should always be replaced whenever a sewage pump is replaced. For a typical sewage pump installation, you're going to need the following. Materials you might need will be 2 inch PVC, ABS, galvanized steel pipe, or copper pipe with proper connections and sealant, 2 inch male threaded adapter for pump connection, 2 inch shutoff gate valve, 2 inch free flow check valve. Always replace this check valve with every new pump installation. Typical tools you might need will be a screwdriver, adjustable wrench, hacksaw, pipe wrench, drill with a 3 16th bit, and a round file or sandpaper. Thanks for attending this presentation brought to you by Pentair.